What's going on, everybody? Keith Niebuhr with Gators Online to talk a little Florida football with Nick Delatore, longtime beat writer uh, covering the Florida Gators and is one of our uh, noted authorities at Gators Online on this program. And really, you know, today we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the team, but also about Utah. I mean, obviously, that's who UF's playing next week. People want to know about them. It's not just all right, what's going on with my team? It's what's going on with the other team. And there's no better to talk to about this than Nick. And so, Nick, let's get started. Uh, we just jump right into this. We don't need to have any pleasantries and, and all that. We already know each other. <laughs> but uh, now, uh, you know, what second-year player, you know, where we, we're trying to figure out a bunch of different questions, a bunch of different angles, and so we can have everything covered. But with Florida, what second-year player do you think is ready to make the biggest jump right now? I mean, this is crucial because the roster was sort of depleted when Billy Napier and company got there. So who's the guy or guys? Yeah, I, I think when you look at the team and the way the team is made up right now, the best players on this team are guys that they got in the transfer portal and guys that they have recruited, whether that is the class of 22 or the class of 23. It's going to be a young team in some areas when you look at this roster. And I, I think you need to add, look at guys like, uh, guys in, in the secondary that need to step up. A Kamari Wilson, he's going to be a starter. I think you look at guys like um, Jack Pyburn with the injury to Justice Boone. I think Jack Pyburn has a ton of potential. Now, Zach Albaverde and I both think that Tyreek Sapp will be the guy that really takes over as the starter in that room. But I look at Justice Boone's injury, and it might have crippled Florida last year, but now you have Tyreek Sapp slide over. And Jack Pyburn is a guy who is a wrestler. He is one of the most dedicated young men we've ever come across. He would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be at the gym at 5 a.m. so he can get a lift in before school, uh, was wrestle as long, along with playing football. Tough kid. Uh, I always say, Keith, if a linebacker runs out there and he doesn't have any gloves on, he's probably got a screw loose, and that's Jack Pyburn. Uh, but you want some guys – with a screw loose or two on your football team. So I think that's one on defense uh, along with Shamar James. Shamar James is going to be your starting linebacker. And when we get into talking Utah, uh, they have a tight end back in Brant Keithy, maybe, uh, who torched Florida last year. And as much as Florida fans liked Ventrell Miller and Amari Bernie, and they both got so much better in their careers, they weren't cover linebackers. And I think Shamar James is your answer now as a sophomore to – a Brant Keithy, to a Mason Taylor once we get down to LSU, to those athletic linebackers who can hurt you by catching the ball. So I think those are two guys um, on the defensive side of the ball that I, I would identify as need to step up, but I also feel like they're ready to step up for the Florida Gators this year uh, as we sit here just one week away from Utah, Keith, and Salt Lake City. You said that those guys were – I, I got to I'll just make sure everybody – we were right here. The, the guys you mentioned for the other teams, you said linebackers, you meant tight ends, obviously. And we're not in the right. business of her. We're not, I'm not trying to make Nick look bad, but we tell each other, look, if, if we, if we fub, if we flub something like I just did right there, the other guy's going to correct us. We want everybody yeah. always to know what, what's going on. But Nick, that's good More information. Is linebackers uh, covering yeah, other people's tight that's ends. Right. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so Nick, you know, of those second year guys, um, is there one that you're, you're maybe most excited about to see? This is just one that you're just like, you know, I think this guy is really – and maybe it's just a gut feeling. I mean, right now we're seeing prognosticators across the country uh, put together their lists of Heisman candidates, and some of these guys haven't even hardly thrown many passes. But it's yeah. kind of that gut feeling that, that, hey, I just – I've heard enough. I've seen enough. I know this kid's DNA. Is there one guy that you're just really thinking just rocket ship to the moon this season? Well, it's an easy one. Uh, you probably forget that he's only a sophomore, Trevor Etienne, that running back. He, I don't know that I even put – the depth chart will come out for Florida this week, and, and they'll have to have a running back one and a running back two. And I don't care what the running back one or running back two really says in Billy Napier's depth chart. These, these guys are 1A and 1AB, not even 1A and 1B. They're, they're going to carry the load for Florida, and I think Trevor Etienne has the ability – uh, to carry the ball 200 times this year, uh, to rush for 1,000 yards. Now, will he do that? Uh, it'll be up to him and the scheme and, and, and what happens on game day. But I think him and, and, and Montreal Johnson have the ability to really carry this offense. And then another guy, Caleb Douglas. I have a gut feeling about him. Now, he plays receiver. 
He's had a case of the dropsies. So have you been able to go to the doctor, get your medicine? If you play receiver, uh, it's in the name of your position. You can't drop the football. Uh, but he's a guy who played high school quarterback, um, is now getting into playing receiver. So for me, I love those kind of crossover positions, especially when they have something together. If I played quarterback my whole life and now I'm a receiver, I know what this defense is doing. Where would I want myself to run this route? What depth would I like to throw this route to because of this uh, coverage? And I think that's probably a unique perspective that only a quarterback would have. And now you have a quarterback who has all the athletic ability to be a star wide receiver, uh, but with that pass mentality and pass knowledge of playing quarterback. So I think Caleb Douglas in a room where there's only Ricky Pearsall that's proven, Caleb Douglas has an opportunity to break out for Florida this year uh, for the passing game. You know, uh, some of the best receivers in Gator history played quarterback in high school. I, I think I could be wrong on this. I think Wes Chandler played some quarterback in high school. He, you could argue he's the greatest receiver in Florida history. Chris Collinsworth, not only did he play quarterback in high school at Titusville astronaut, he went to Florida as a quarterback and played that as a freshman. I want to say Andre Caldwell from Tampa, who was a great receiver for Florida. I believe he played some quarterback or a lot of quarterback in high school. And then another one, a blast from the past, Nick, you may not even, you're a young guy. <laughs> not, as you constantly remind me, you're so much younger than me. Uh, Ty, Tyrone Young, Ty in the sky, played for the New Orleans Saints after uh, a good career at the Gators. He's like 6'6 kid from Ocala. He played quarterback. And they transitioned him to receiver where he had a great career at Florida. So you make an excellent point. If I could go back a second, Nick, on Jack Pyburn, his recruitment was one pretty interesting to follow. And I was covering another team at the time. Um, but he was a guy that was a late, I don't want to say late bloomer necessarily as a player, but a late bloomer as a prospect where he didn't really jump on people's radars to late. Now, a lot of times that's kind of a red flag uh, because, you know, if – Every year we always see these guys get these late offers. And is it because they're really good or is it because 17 teams have, uh, you know, a spot available? You know what I mean? They, they, they still got they still got spots available and they're all going to them, you know, because that's what they that's what they need. That's where the opening is. We've seen that happen before. Like Malik Langham, I want to say, a guy that right that signed with Florida had a lot of attention late, and I don't think he ever really materialized in college. So is Pyburn going to be one of those guys, or is he going to be a guy that was a true find, a guy that was, you know, really a riser? And gosh, you know, you watched this film, and he, as a high school senior, and he was destroying people out there. But off the record, I had a couple college coaches say, ah, you know, whatever, I can't believe Florida took. Yeah, I think I think with Jack Pyburn, it's um, the work ethic is there. Uh, and, and if you're looking at it from an NFL perspective, maybe a little bit of a tweener body. I think he played more inside linebacker, middle linebacker in high school, and now he's obviously obviously going to be asked to play edge. Uh, come off the come off the edge either at uh, at their F position, defensive end, edge. You know, as a stand up rush linebacker. Um, the one thing that you'll I'll, you'll never hear me questioning with Jack Pyburn is his work ethic and, and whether or not Florida could ask him to play left guard. And I think he would start eating that way and working out that way and would figure out a way to get his way himself into the lineup. So yeah, we'll see with Jack. I, I, I think there were, <clears throat> there's, there could be a thousand reasons, as you know, why a kid goes under recruited or, or maybe he was rightly recruited and you get down to those nitty gritty and say, like, Hey, we need a guy in a spot. And, uh, one through nine on our board didn't come. So now we're going to have to go to number 10. But yeah. I, I think uh, I would not question Jack's work ethic. And now the work he's put in has met, the preparation has now met with opportunity. And what will he do with that opportunity? Yeah. And, and Nick, let's just be honest. Some guys just get better. Some yeah. guys just get, hey, look, they were okay as an 18 year old and they're really good as a 20 year old. You know, we talked to uh, uh, Lee McGriff, the Gator great and former Gator broadcaster yesterday. And he was talking about Lewis Oliver was a walk-on and ended up being a first-team All-American at safety. And, Nick, if you saw this guy, he looked like Mr. Olympia. How could anybody overlook this guy? But it still happens. So, you know, Mike, remains Mike to be Pouncey, seen. You know? Mike Pouncey was moved to the defensive line his freshman year. That's right. Uh, That's right. Then his senior year, after Marquise leaves, uh, he gets moved to center and has a terrible game snapping passes in his, or snapping uh, snapping the ball in his first game. Well, yeah, well, they were passes. Ten years, <laughs> goes on to play ten years in the NFL. You know, it, sometimes it, it takes a while to click. 
he may be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame before it's all said and done. Pro. You know, all pro. Now, I mean, you know, people think Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl. Forget that. All pro is the big one. Anyway, all right. So let's turn our attention to Utah. Then we'll go back to Florida. What is the deal with Cam Rising, the the Utah quarterback? We know Nick that he came. And by the way, I want to apologize. I had a call come through. Didn't have my phone set up right. So I hope that wasn't uh, too distracting to everybody. But Cam Cam Rising coming off of a year where he completed sixty five percent of his passes. 3,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, only eight interceptions, and we know what he can do running the ball. He ran the ball so effectively at times against Florida last year. What's the deal with him, though, Nick? Because he's coming off a big injury here. Where's he at right now? Well, when you're a coach like Kyle Whittingham and you've been in a place since uh, 2005, you don't have to say much. (laughs) You've heard yourself uh, some leeway with the media, so they're not pushing back, and he's not saying much. I think if I had to put – you know, gun to my head, had to put a percentage on it. I'd say 65%, I expect, Cam Rising to start in a week's time against Florida on August 31st. He is an all-Pac-12 type of quarterback, an all-conference type of player. He's been there now five years. He makes their offense go. Um, He's not Michael Vick at Virginia Tech, but Florida saw seven carries for 91 yards last year. He can hurt you. He can extend drives. When the play breaks down, he can use his legs to get a fresh set of downs. So having him is a huge thing for Utah. Uh, Their second string quarterback is down. They don't really know who would play. They probably play a mixture of two different guys. Nate Johnson's one from California, a really highly rated uh, quarterback uh, who can definitely use his legs against Florida. Uh, And that was an issue for Florida last year, tackling, uh, getting guys to the ground. Um, So for me, even if Cam Rising plays, I'm still at that 65, 35, you know, will he, will, will he, won't he? Um, what is he, uh, you know, tearing your ACL on January 1st, having the surgery later in January. Um, we're talking seven months rehab time. And yes, this has become a very routine surgery and guys are coming back quicker than ever. But what are you, you know, he, as we sit here seven days before the game has not, hasn't even been cleared to fully participate, didn't go through either of their scrimmages. Um, what is he? Is he Cam Rising? Because I would argue that it's impossible for him to be the same Cam Rising that he was last year against Florida coming off of this injury right now. i tell you what, you, you mentioned all-conference. I think he'd be all-conference in a lot of conferences, just not that yeah. one, you know, because of Caleb Williams. Yeah. Everybody loves the dog old Bo Nix. Bo Nix put up some really, really damn good numbers last year. Michael Penix, your, boy, your, your guy. That's Bo right. Nix. That's right. My boy, Michael Penix at Washington. I mean, it's a really good conference for quarterbacks. Uh, and Cam be, Rising, it, yeah, Cam He's, Rising would be the SEC first team all conference quarterback, especially well, this pre, year preseason, look, preseason, definitely. Yeah. yeah. When you look at this team and uh, look at this conference right now, there's not a lot of star power at quarterback. That's right. I agree with you. Now, what about tight end? You mentioned him earlier, Brent Heathy. I mean, he's a guy that burned Florida last year pretty good. God, it seems like – I mean, Nick, again, before you were born, it just seems like my whole life opposing tight ends have just ripped apart Florida. I mean, just absolutely destroyed Florida year after year after year. And, and uh, it's kind of the one constant in my life here. Uh, so what about Brent Keithy? What do we know about his physical situation? Because, again, he's another guy coming off a big injury. Well, Keith, I might have the grays, but you certainly have the experience uh, and the knowledge of Gator football history. Um, but Brant Keithy, last year, Florida fans immediately got on Ventro Miller, and especially Amari Bernie, because Amari Bernie was the more athletic of those two, um, for Brant Keithy torching Florida. Uh, and, and I told Florida fans before the game, like, hey, this dude's going to be a problem. Um, and then after the game, I told them, hey, I already told you he was going to be a problem. He's a NFL tight end. He would not be at Utah this season. He wouldn't have been at Utah last season if not for multiple injuries. So Brant had his injury week five. And Kyle Whittingham continues to say that somehow, and listen, there's different. You could have a total knee blowout with your ACL, MCL, PCL. You could have a setback in rehab. Jaden Hill had that after his ACL and had to have a scope last spring. Uh, So there's multiple reasons, but Brant Keithy – is a little bit ahead of Cam Rising, but tore his ACL five months, four months before Cam Rising did. So uh, kind of the same thing there for me. Um, He's a little bit undersized. You know, when I looked at a guy like Anthony Richardson last year with his lower body injury, 
okay, well, now you're when you're 6'4", 240, everyone's going low on you. Brent Keithy's not that. He's about 6'1", 6'2", 220. Guys won't be diving at his knees and ankles. But that tight end position, you're blocking and you're having to leverage and anchor against uh, 300-pound, 280-pound defensive ends. You're having to run and cut and, and move and, and try to get open. So there's a lot more, I think, it's a lot more taxing underneath perhaps uh, than a quarterback would be. But I think I, I would expect more that Brent Keithy, just based on when the injury happened, that he would be more ready uh, than Cameron Rising would be, especially when we're looking at both guys not scrimmaging. They're, of course, they're veterans. They've been in the program for five years. Um, they don't really need to learn anything, and the coach staff knows what they're going to get from them. They don't need to scrimmage. But to me, if you're coming off of an injury, I want to see you scrimmage. I want to see you going out, uh, you know, when – when, when everyone's going full speed and there's some tackling, obviously those guys would have been in non-contact. But those are two huge pieces for the Utah Utes. And as we sit here a week out, there's really not a concrete answer if Florida's going to have to face them. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, your gut says, oh, God, they're going to play. Come on. But you really don't know. You don't know. And if they do, how effective are they going to be and all that stuff. So there's a lot to, be, a lot to shake out there. But what we know is Utah – the guy's been putting together one solid team after the other. So if these guys aren't 100 percent or ineffective, they they probably got guys behind them that are fully capable of doing things. But you lose a guy like Cam Rising, or if he's not even 100 percent, yeah. Nick, in professional sports, pro- athletes on the individual sports, tennis, golf, when they're injured, usually don't see them for a while because if you're not at 100 percent, you're going to get your ass beat, right? Mm-hmm. If you're if you're if you're uh, Roger Federer and your wrist is a little hurt, you're going to get destroyed out there because a hundredth ranked player in the world can beat you to death if you're not at the top of your game. And so, you know, if Cam Rising isn't a hundred percent, we look very healthy. He's very good. He's very good. And, uh, but if he's not a hundred percent, that definitely, you know, it could change some things for both teams. You know, we don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, bad injury last week for Florida. It's one of those ones that really kind of it's gut wrenching because the guy's a, a sixth year senior. I want to say Cam Carroll, the running back transfer from Tulane, has the severe knee injury uh, in practice, and you know he was having such a good fall camp based on y'all's reports and your your intel and all your reporting. So he's out for the season. You, you look, you've got. ETN, you've got Johnson, you're good there, but gosh, if one of those guys, I mean, look, it's a long season, right? You've got to have a plenty of backs. You got to have guys ready to go with Cam Carroll out. Nick can freshman Trey on Webb take over his carries. Can he, is he ready to make that transition? Running backs, one of those positions where it's a, probably a little easier for a freshman to come in and make some noise. I mean, a left tackle, it ain't going to happen much, right? Quarterback. It's very hard, <clears throat> But historically, Florida's had a lot of freshman running backs and other schools come right in and be major contributors. Can he do that? Yeah, so I, I think, obviously, uh, I just gushed over uh, ETN and Johnson a, a minute ago. I think Cam Carroll had worked himself into running back three, and he was going to get carries. He was a great pass catcher out of the backfield, better than the, the two ahead of him. And I thought he would get – Maybe a little bit more carries than Naquan Wright did a year ago. Naquan had 47. I thought maybe uh, Cam would be in that 50 range uh, with 10, 15, 20 catches. Now, I don't think Trayon Webb takes over that entire role. But, yes, now you are running back three. I don't think Trayon Webb is going to redshirt. He'll be a guy who plays on special teams, kick coverage, punt coverage. Um, but now you are you are running back three, and – what can you get in the mix? It's all about coaches trusting you. And, and the big thing for freshman running backs, if you're a running back at the University of Florida, chances are you weren't asked to pass block much in high school. And that's a whole different ball game, especially when now your pass rushing is the guys you're trying to block are 240-pound junior linebackers from Alabama, LSU, Auburn, and Georgia. Um guys who are ready to take your head off and you're not even sure who you're supposed to be blocking or picking up. And that's how you get your quarterback killed. Uh, so the biggest thing for Trey on Webb will be, am I good enough in pass block? And, and am I good enough? Am I not fumbling the ball? Can I earn coaches trust to get into more packages? Make no mistake about it. It's going to be the Montreal Johnson and Trevor and Trevor Etienne show. But I think that the more Trey on Webb can show in practice and early on, uh, maybe not against Utah, but Florida gets McNeese state, 
Uh, that'll be a game where Traron Webb might lead the team in carries, uh, depending on if Florida can get out to uh, a lead and you start getting some other guys in. So Traron Webb is a guy who I, I didn't yeah. think would redshirt, but really wouldn't play much on offense and now will have a role uh, on offense for the Gators in, in, in their biggest and deepest or formerly deepest room on the team. All right, last thing, Nick, and this wasn't uh, – we always map these things out. Off script. Nick, uh, yeah, off the script. This is a tough one, man. I hope you can handle it. Kind of what's the one thing you're really looking forward to going out to Utah next week? Seeing Salt Lake City, a part of the country I don't know if you've been to before, checking out the, a, a Pac-12 stadium. It's not a traditional Pac-12 campus. It's It looks a little different than the, the schools in California and Washington and Oregon. But what are you most looking forward to? You've been covering Florida a long time. It's such an interesting trip. Uh, the last time Florida went at a conference, I think, was 1991. If I that was Syracuse, I'm I'm, I'm getting into your territory here, Keith. Step yeah. on your toes. 91. I was only three years old. Um, so I'm interested to see Salt Lake City. I've never been to Utah. Never been to Salt Lake City. Uh, I'm an avid skier. Uh, would like to get out to that kind of the, that part of the country and and do some skiing. Um, but it's, it's to me, um, I love taking these road trips. And I've been to every SEC town except for Auburn. I've driven through but never been for a game. Uh, and then obviously, having covered Florida for 11 years, I've never been to Athens. Uh, really hoping that they do a home-and-home home, uh, when they start those stadium renovations in Jacksonville. But for me, we're going to get out there early. You're going to see some coverage from us that that uh, I think we'll, we'll, you guys will like. And, and I'm going to enjoy finding some local food, some local breweries, um, and, and then that, that's, that's just that area, you know, the Rocky mountains, I think are beautiful. Um, I've seen some pictures from the press box in front of the, from some of the cheaper seats, Keith, it's one of the, it's one of the places in the country where the cheaper seats might give you a better view of what's beyond the stadium than getting down. So I'm looking forward to seeing the stadium, the food, the culture, um, and, and everything that Utah and Salt Lake city has to offer. I'll be out there with you. And we're we're gonna, I'm looking forward to eating some bison burger. I just hope the mm. bison don't eat you because I know you like to get right there in the center of the action. We don't want you getting hurt. You're too valuable for us, Nick. I mean, let's be honest. We need you, man. All right. uh, but you know I, what? But, it would be great YouTube content if I if I could pet a bison. Great YouTube content. Might even be better YouTube. You uh, might be even better content if you get the the bison eating me on camera. Yeah, I don't think they're they're carnivores though. Uh, they might probably okay. just pick at your they probably just pick at your skull for a little while. All right, look, <laughs> that's Nick Delatore, longtime beat writer for the Florida Gators. I'm Keith Niebuhr. This is Talking Gators. Uh, go to GatorsOnline.com right now for more great content, team and recruiting. We got a special Nick, fifty percent off. We'll get you in the door. Fifty percent off annual subscription. It's a great deal. There's stuff every single day, and also. Uh, we got a great message board community that's growing and getting more active. So uh, make sure you go to GatorsOnline.com for more great content from Nick, uh, Zach Albaverde, Corey Bender, and myself. Take care, everybody.